What's up there, Workforce? Chris here with work to game and I just got back from getting my hands on Pokemon Let's Go. Now, I am on Team Eevee, Brian's on Team Pikachu, so feel free to let us know in the comments below how you guys feel about that. And I want to talk a little bit about who this game is for, who Pokemon Let's Go is for. And what I really mean by that is who is going to love this game and be glad they bought it and who is going to regret this purchase. Uh, every game kind of has people that fall in both categories. Some are able to group you know, more on one side than on the other. And so let's kind of talk about that. Now, before I get started, Brian and I are part of the Nintendo Ambassadors program. And so I am supposed to disclose that. And what that means is that we get early access to sometimes information or assets, or in this case, get a chance to go to a public event uh, right before everybody else gets access to a game, jump to the front of the line and get to try out the game as kind of a member of the press, like a, like a lesser, more casual version of like an IGN. We are not paid for it and it in no way says that we have to say that we like a game or we don't like a game. We're allowed to stay entitled to our opinion, but we are supposed to disclose that at the beginning of all these videos. So there it is. So let's jump in. What is going on with this game now that I've gotten to play it? Now, based on everything leading up to this event, the one question I always had before for every piece of information they gave us and after every piece of information they've given us is what is this game? What is Pokemon Let's Go? And honestly, after leaving today, Brian and I totaled together, played for about 20 minutes and then got a chance to talk to people uh, on staff who have played the game and who have spent a lot of time with the demo and are there to teach people the demo today and asking them a lot of questions and really trying to probe for as much information as we could, not looking for spoilers, but just looking for gameplay mechanics, basic FAQs as deep into the mechanics as they'll take us. Uh, and I, I still have that question. Uh, so still today, looking forward to November 16th, the game coming out, I still have a lot of questions about how game mechanics will function, but I did get a good feel for what the tone of the game is. And this tone is something totally unique. I haven't played a game like this before, and that is both good and bad. This game is very arcade-like. Uh, basically, it's going to center on there are NPCs that you can combat, and there are going to be Pokemon out in the world. First of all, there will not be random encounters. You can see the encounters. You can see what you're going to battle before you battle it. And it's mostly going to be centered on catching, kind of like Pokemon Go. Uh, you're going to have these balls. They're in limited quantity, though it sounded like you're going to be able to buy that with in-game currency. We'll see how that plays out. Um, but you have these balls, and there's going to basically be a white circle around me. And then there's a green circle that keeps going. And you're trying to throw your Pokeball into the green circle. So the white circle represents how wide it can go, and it goes all the way down to nothing. Uh, there is a point system kind of involved, and that determines kind of the amount of experience you get. If you play with two players on the one account, uh, them both getting it into the center gets you even more points and things like that. So uh, we'll obviously have to see exactly how those mechanics shape out and kind of what the max minning on that is when the game comes out, but that's, that's later. Uh, basically, there is no combat when you're out in the world. You're just catching these. Uh, then you're going to have these trainers that are out in the world, not just gyms, but just loose trainers. And when you walk in front of them, they're going to go, oh, and you're going to battle them. And that is a more traditional battle where you're going to choose from a series of abilities. Them being this kind of being a demo version. Um, obviously, I got a chance to use fire moves on grass Pokemon, so it was killing them in one hit. Um, but I expect those battles to get a great deal harder. And then there is variety within the Pokemon in, you know, height and weight and things like that. Part of that is geared toward just collecting. Uh, so there's going to be like shiny versions, like foil versions uh, that you can catch that appear rarely. Sometimes they're going to be marked with like a blue set of waves around them or a red set of waves around them. Red means they're very large. Blue means they're very tiny. The smaller Pokemon is, the faster its stats will be, which means it'll get to swing first. This, the bigger it is, the slower that Pokemon will be, but it will hit harder, uh, so it will be stronger. And so you'll have to kind of strike that balance based on kind of what the Pokemon is. Do you want them to hit really hard and you're okay with them going second, or do you want them to get that first attack off and it doesn't really matter to you how hard they hit? Um, so that will all be a balance, but that's really it. You get experience for catching, you get experience for these little battles. It's a very feature light game. Uh, so when it comes to who this is for, this is trying to bridge the gap between Pokemon Go players, which is this totally new generation of Pokemon players. Many of them may not have ever been into Pokemon, um, and it's just kind of this collecting. And then this single player grand experience that started on the Game Boys and is, is very centered on that kind of mobile aspect of the Nintendo Switch. 
and will will truly be fulfilled in 2019 when we get our first real traditional Pokemon title for the Nintendo Switch. This is bridging those gaps. You are able to bring your Pokemon from Pokemon Go into this and back, and there's gonna be this little Pokeball that you can carry out in the world. Take a Pokemon from in your Switch game, uh, your Pokemon Let's Go, take your Eevee for example, put it in the ball, and as you walk around throughout the day, if it's bound to your phone, as it crosses and finds certain things, it'll actually find items for you and things like that. When you get home to your home Switch, you will you will be able to uh, just jump in and, and you'll have those items waiting for you. Um, I will say that I will say that in true Nintendo fashion, the way that ball is going to go back and forth is the guy said you're just going to have to turn the Bluetooth off on your phone so that it can pair with the thing. So there's going to be some complaining around that, I'm sure. Uh, but it was neat. It was neat. It was neat to get to hold the ball. It was bigger than I thought it would be. Um, and it was also the joystick was smaller than I thought it would be. Uh, so it, it's kind of oddly shaped, but I think it'll be nice for kind of kids to get to play. And that really brings me to having summed up what this game is and what the core features are. Uh, and some of the questions I had, who do I think this is for? I think this is for people brand new to the franchise that maybe Pokemon Go is enough for them, but, but traditional Pokemon games are going to be too much. Uh, so somebody like Brian and Maddie, uh, I believe he's going to be putting out a video talking about how excited, you know, and kind of his impressions on this experience. Uh, I think this absolutely targets somebody like that, as opposed to somebody that's a more traditional, like me, okay, I've made it into adulthood, I have the disposable income to buy a Nintendo Switch and a game like this, and I just want to relive my childhood, but I can handle tough battles, and I want that challenge, and I want all these things. This may be a bit of a letdown for them. Uh, so I think this game is going to do very well in people who played maybe the card game and want to focus on that collecting aspect. I want to pay you know, the list price of this game. Maybe I want to get the controller so I get the, the Mew that's in it. Um, I've heard ranging quotes on if that price is going to come down if you order it in certain bundles and stuff. We'll just have to see as we move into the Christmas season what all that controller gets grouped with. Um, but, you know, I, I just want to collect them. I want to get my shinies and all that. And a traditional kind of maybe 40 hours of playthrough is enough for me outside of just the unlimited collecting aspect. Um, now, on the other hand, people who are looking for a lot of depth, uh, I want to play through these battles and I want to care about my types and all of that. Um, this game may be a little feature light. There is supposed to be some form of system where I can battle, but I don't know, based on how casual the game felt, it does seem like that would be more something where you and I are on a local network, we find each other, we're friends, we toss our Pokemon at each other, and at the end it goes, hey, this is your first time battling Brian today, here's a free antidote. Awesome, and then that's it, uh, and that's what you get. There's no, there's no winning and losing, and, and really any of that. I don't know that there will be trading, but what is interesting now that I've kind of said that's the core reason of this video is I, I think this is geared more towards the casual audience, and I think the hardcore audience is going to be disappointed. Um, I think there are going to be people that are upset if Brian and I ever say anything negative about the game, and those are going to be people who love the franchise and who are collecting all these Pokemon and dumping unlimited hours into this, just like Pokemon Go. Uh, I think there are going to be a lot of people who are mad at the price that will probably never see our videos because they're going to buy it, they're going to play it for an hour, and they're going to feel like this isn't a complete game uh, because the simplicity of it uh, really could make it feel like this just isn't the Pokemon I expected you because you're taking me back to Kanto, because this is supposed to help me relive my red and blue experience in this new, more beautiful, gosh, it's beautiful, uh, world with this new hardware and all this, it doesn't do that. And I feel maybe they could have overcome that audience by saying, hey, this is also when we're releasing red and blue to the Nintendo Switch and people who bought the game will get those for free or something like that. Um, but that's not the direction they chose to go. So I think there's gonna be a lot of people that this just really frustrates that it's not 2019. And I hope those people will come back in 2019 and be willing to pony up the money again to get the game that they really meant to buy the first time. Um, so I, I think that's kind of where this game is. Things that I'm I'm looking forward to when I get my hands on it. Uh, I am looking forward to seeing a little more about kind of how the combat works exactly over gym battles and how hard those battles can get. I look forward to exploring the region, things like that. But what I'm most excited about is that this game is promising to be the foundation stone. We've heard that before and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But the foundation stone of the ability to move our core account forward. And what I mean by that is because your Pokemon Go stuff can come and go and Let's Go is kind of the forms your base account, 
The question is, okay, when they add the next Pokemon game in 2019, is that going to have an interaction here? And the next thing you know, over a series of games, because you always like Fire Pokemon, you're now mastering Fire Pokemon. So, you know, maybe Charizard is drawn a little differently, right? He has a different style to him in each game, um, but he's still base Charizard, and you can apply cosmetics to him. Or maybe he levels 1% faster or 5% faster. Or when he faints, he has a chance to auto-revive after the battle or something like that because of this mastery on this account. And I don't know how deep that system is going to be, but those are the kind of things that I start to get excited about the potential of uh, is that they've got this ability to start linking games. And so at that point, they could start balancing the release of new games with the release of old games coming back. And so you could say, okay, go play Red and Blue. And if you beat Red and Blue, or if you catch this many Pokemon Blue, uh, Red and Blue, you catch this many of this type, or you catch this exact Pokemon and you level it to 99 or whatever, you're gonna get this, this stat or this cosmetic or this badge or whatever that you're going to carry into every Pokemon game from here on out. Now this isn't retroactive, it never can be because those games weren't built with that in mind, but this is promising to be that starting point. That from here on out, if you've been on the fence about investing in this franchise, that everything you put in from here on out is promising to be something that you're going to carry forward in some way or another. Now we've heard that before, right? The big glaring one is something like Destiny that promised to be a 10 year game and then with so many glaring mistakes that they had to release Destiny 2, and then people were mad because they didn't get to carry it in, that the features there, right? Because it didn't, it didn't work as the foundation stone. And then there's other games that that does turn out to be that way. Every time I boot back up World of Warcraft, all my old stuff is there. It just works. Uh, and then there's in-betweens, right? Things like Final Fantasy, where you can kind of carry your game over, but it's it's all different. There's legacy characters, but they're mixed in, and they don't really have a huge number of advantages outside of just having that player experience. Um, so I, I think that there, this could be handled a lot of different ways, and I think that as a foundation point, I would keep an eye on this franchise, but as far as buying this game, I would just question, what is it you're expecting it to be? If you're expecting it to be something that's beautiful, that you can just sit there and stare at the world and zone out and just kind of catch things, it was really easy. Awesome. Awesome. This game is going to be a great game for you. It's a great game to play casually, um, but I would group this into like a tier two game on the Switch, and what I mean by that is tier one is games that you just must own. If you own a Switch, at some point you need to play Mario Odyssey, at some point you need to play Zelda, at some point, right, these are just games that are just going to be iconic and live on, and I think they they go across such a wide breadth of players that it, that it's so close to being all players that you should really give them a shot. And then those tier two is where you start to hone in on games that are more towards a specific type. So I would put Mario Par Party, Mario Kart. Uh, we'll see if Smash falls in in which one there. Um, you know, Pokemon in here, Splatoon, uh, and and so like for example, Splatoon. That's a very different player than what I'm describing here. So somebody who owns Mario and loves it, and somebody who owns Mario and loves it. One of them may love this game, and one of them they may be a Splatoon player. And and so this probably there's a chance that this isn't the game for them because in my mind there's a chance that those are two very different player bases. Uh, and so I would kind of group that in here, and I would. I would just say that, you know, maybe this is the game that you just you just hold off until 2019. Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on is it worth at least dabbling into if you can find a used copy or if a friend can loan you a physical copy or you just have extra money that you want to spend on, on getting it um, so that you can have that kind of account started uh, towards the 2019 one if that interaction is there. Uh, but there's a very good chance that you may just have to wait till next year, which is almost here. It really is. Uh, so I don't know when that release date will be in next year. Obviously, next year is long enough that it could still be over a year away. Uh, but I, I think that that's who this game is centered on. I think that that's who this game is for. And I think that in all honesty, uh, I'm glad I got to get my hands on it because it tells me that for me, this is probably not I have to stay up until midnight and play it on day one. Uh, but for somebody like Brian and Maddie, it, it may be that game. It may be that good of a fit. Uh, so hopefully you guys will get to see some more coverage on that here on, on the channel. This has been Chris with work to game I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for hanging out. Any questions, comments, thoughts down below, definitely let us know. Are you planning on getting the game? What is it you're hoping for? Uh, if you have any questions about, like, did I see a certain type of thing, because that's an important mechanic to you to either have or to not have, definitely let me know. Uh, they answered a lot of questions for me, and so I would love to kind of go over anything that, that I found out that I didn't relay on here down in that comment section below. 
I will see you guys next time. Hey you, especially if you're a new face, welcome to the workforce. If you want to hit that subscribe button to say you like us, we'd really appreciate it. But there's a little bell next to it if you really like a channel, and you can go ahead and hit that if you'd like to be notified. Be sure that if that thing lets you know, hey, do you always want to be notified, or you just sometimes want to be notified, that you tell it, oh man, I actually meant by notified, notified. So why don't you give that a click, and uh, we hope to see you around in our next video.